How do I use divisional charts the right way and how should I not use them? This is a very important question which people have sometimes. Every divisional chart is very special and they have to be used for that respective area. But there's a lot of homework which we need to do which we don't do and that is why you will see uh, you will do predictions from uh, divisional charts and they won't work <laughs> so then they get a bad name people think that oh they are not working which means you have to see is the thing which is seen in the divisional chart manifesting in the lagna chart that is this is huge this is very crucial because anything which has to happen externally has to be there in the lagna chart if it is not there period it won't manifest does not mean it it won't be there but what i'm saying is it won't manifest if it is not there in the lagna chart so let's take an example if some suppose uh, somebody's somebody's uh, lagna chart is saying that the person won't ever get married and then you check the nabamsha chart so suppose the person has a great Navamsha. Okay. So then what does this mean? Now, does this mean this is a contradiction? That, oh, how is it possible that a person with a very good Navamsha will not get married? Or suppose the person is married and the person has a very bad Navamsha. And suppose the Lagna chart indicates that uh, the upcoming Mahadashas primarily or most of majority of the planets are linked with the second house, seventh house, and the eleventh house in the Lagna chart. Okay, Bhav chart. Um, I mean, uh, in the D1 chart, Bhav chart. Okay, not the D1 Lagna chart. <laughs> so the thing is, in that case, what will happen? The Bhav chart or the D1 chart is indicating that marriage is good, as per house. But the Navamsa is indicating, oh, marriage is not very good. Mm -hmm. So therefore. We need to understand the significations of the divisional charts. So, see, if you want to understand divisional charts, you, you understand the houses. It's very easy. Which means, let's take the example of fifth house. So what is fifth house? Fifth house shows a pure form of love. It shows physical love, you know, love affair, romance and all these things. It shows childbirth. It shows intelligence. It shows... Uh, Anything which uh, you like to do, it shows creativity, it shows hobbies. So now these same things are seen from the Navamsha also. Not everything, most of certain parts. Then there is an aspect of the seventh house, which is the uh, aspect of marriage, the event of wedding and staying together. That also has to be, uh, some portion of that has to be seen from the Navamsha. Then similarly, you have the ninth house, which is the house of Dharma. So some part of that also has to be seen from the Navamsha chart. So the Navamsha chart should be primarily used for these three houses. The fifth house, then the seventh house, the ninth house. Okay. But the problem is we, we think Navamsha is only the chart of marriage. So we only link it to marriage. Good Navamsha means good marriage. No, it's not like that. What if the person's sixth house is running in the Lagna chart? In the D1 bhav chart, I mean. So then, 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 what happens? The person may not get married. So then, is it? Uh, then sometimes people say, "Oh, actually, you know, Navamsha gets active after 35." So uh, these good qualities of the Navamsha will appear after 35. No, for your kind information, this is a very big hoax in YouTube astrology. Uh, this this Navamsha video, I have made many videos on this. I have told a thousand times, I'm just repeating it. Navamsha doesn't get active after 35 or 32, 22, 23. It's active even before your birth. So, in fact, the Navamsha Lagna decides the situation of your uh, birth, actually. Okay. So, what I'm saying here is that the physical... See, why I'm stressing on the physical manifestation? Because these days, everything has become very physical. You know, uh, if, if you read the scriptures, uh, the scriptures hardly uh, emphasize on houses. If you read Brihat Parashar, Hora Shastra, they will always emphasize on one thing. The planet is in which, what kind of dignity the planet has. That is given the prime importance. Have you seen? 
Like they say, is an exalted planet is a great planet. Bestows great boons. But then many times you see people tell that, oh, I had run the dasha of these exalted planets. I didn't get anything. So this is the default attitude of people in Kali Yuga. People in Kali Yuga, as Bhagavatam says, you know, manda sumanda matayo, that they want to get, they have this entitlement complex. He should give me, she should give me, my boss should give me. I will not do any work, but my boss should keep feeding me. Okay? And my employees should come and salute me. Yes. <laughs> so this uh, superiority complex is the stupidity of Kali Yuga actually. Where everybody thinks that the world revolves around them and only thing everybody is doing is try to make this one person, which is me, happy. Okay? That should be everybody's agenda. How can they make me happy? I am not interested in their happiness. Yes, I might be interested in their happiness, but provided they are also interested in my happiness. That's what uh, marriage is in Kali Yuga. I scratch your back, you scratch my back. You see. So, Therefore, uh, if you take the statements of the Brihat uh, Parashara literally, then you will see, you will feel that, oh, astrology doesn't work because I got the dasha of this debilitated planet. Suppose it was in the 11th house, it gave you a lot of money. But then uh, 11th house, they say, is the house of punishment. Tano, tana, danda, hara, tano. That is the shloka which is used because it, because it fulfills your desire. Now you may think, wow, that's such a great house, right? It's the best house. How is it fulfilling my desire and why do the Acharya say that this is a house of punishment? Because the moment your desire is fulfilled, zoop, you go up, which means you get another desire. Then you work on all the houses. You maintain a family, you travel, you buy home, you have children, you see second, third, fourth, fifth, like this I'm saying. So uh, that is the reason you are taking birth again and again and again and again. That is, and uh, according to scriptures, birth is like a punishment because you are suffering every time. Okay? So therefore, uh, you may think, oh, uh, suppose, you know, uh, uh, Pisces Lagna, Venus, uh, Venus is there in the, uh, Venus is exalted, suppose, you know, Pisces Lagna. Okay. So then now, um, you may read all these things in the scriptures and oh, exalted Venus will give this benefit, that benefit, right? Um, or, so therefore, you have to be very careful in interpreting it. These days, you have to see the external manifestation if if that is happening in the Lagnacha. Because suppose somebody has a, suppose somebody has Venus in the fifth house of D9 chart, okay? So then what happens is, the person has at a soul level inborn capabilities related to Venus, which is painting, drawing, arts and all these things. But now suppose uh, the karma of this life, which is seen from the Lagna chart, the D1 chart, is telling that the person always has to keep uh, you know, working under somebody or has to do research for educational purposes. So then how this will manifest is this Venus in fifth house of D9 will give results, but it will not be able to uh, showcase itself. Okay? It is like a potential which is there, but it is hidden in this life. Okay? So now it will depend on the overall person's horoscope, both the horoscopes, to what extent is the person interested to pursue creative talents related to Venus, like painting and drawing and arts and all these things. So similarly, we have uh, the uh, Saptamsa chart, you know, we, which is the uh, chart for children. Okay. So if now for children, it's even more important because I mean, even, even for marriage, but for ch children, it's even more important because you have to first have children, right? Without, without having children, how do you analyze the Saptamsa actually? So therefore, you have to first check the, the Lagna chart, the D1 and the Bhav chart and see if childbirth is promised or promise doesn't mean promised, but is, is, is it possible to have children for you? Okay? Or you have, you know, low sperm count if you're a man or if you are a woman, you have difficulty conceiving or even if you conceive, maybe there's problem in your delivery or even after uh, delivery, sometimes, you know, there's premature delivery and all this and the child has a difficult time. So these things you have to check first externally because you go and tell a person, oh, your saptamsa is great, but suppose 
child birth is denied in the horoscope in D1. So then you give a big prediction, oh, you know, Jupiter is exalted in your Saptamsha chart, blah, blah, blah. This will happen, that will happen. And then this person is like, wow, but I never had children. <laughs> so therefore, the results, the, the good and bad, both. Remember, I'm not saying only of good. I'm saying even the bad. If you are seeing something really very bad in the divisional charts, you have to check if that is getting a passage to manifest as an active karma in your life okay, through the D1 chart. If that is not happening, then maybe that thing uh, will be there, but externally you will have some support, but internally you are weak actually. Okay. So for example, if uh, a person's uh, trinal lords of, uh, not, not trinal lords, the fifth lord only, okay, only one trinal lord, fifth lord, of the Saptamsha is not very well placed and Jupiter as the Karak of Saptamsha is also not very well placed. Let's example. Let's take an example. So in that case, what can happen? And now suppose the Lagna chart uh, is promising great uh, children, which means uh, the fifth house is well good or the ninth house is good or the second house is good. Then these placements can give good children. Uh, so then what will happen is uh, they will have children, but their relationship with the children will not be good. So, and now let's take the opposite. If the Saptamsha is great and the person is not having children, then if they adopt a child, then their relationship will be great. So, this same good Saptamsha's prediction, how it will manifest as your own child or you will have to adopt somebody, that you have to check from the Lagna chart. And if you do not check that, then if your predictions won't have any value because if you do not I mean, if you don't know that you will have your own child or your, it has to be an adopted child, then how, how do you plan your life? You know, how do you decide what to do? All right. So therefore, uh, this same Venus in the fifth house of Navamsha can give you great benefits in career if Venus is linked to your money houses in the Lagna chart. Okay. Or it can give you great benefits in marriage if Venus is strongly linked with the marriage houses. Or if Venus is linked with the creativity houses, the same fifth house Venus of D9 can give you great benefits in creativity. So this fifth house Venus in D9, you have to identify from the Lagna chart, will it go in the domain of creativity or good married life or career in you know film or you know painting, dance and all these things. So this is what is known as physical manifestation. Okay. So you must do this. If you don't do, and then you just make a blunder, oh, your Navamsha is bad, so your married life will be bad. But then after 20 years, the person comes and tells you, sir, my I never got married only. You said my married life is bad, but I never got married only. So if the sixth house is active in the upcoming Dashas very strongly through Nakshatra, then it can happen that the person may not get married in the, uh, for the next 20, 30 years. So then this person is wondering, oh, you said my married life will be bad, but I never got married. So should I consider it as a right prediction or wrong prediction? Okay. And then you will justify, you will say, oh, no, no, sir, actually, you know, no marriage is also like a punishment, you know, but that's not necessary because there are many people who may not be married, but they are happy. Okay, so there are also, there are four categories of people, married and happy, married and unhappy, Un unmarried and happy and unmarried and unhappy. So you cannot just shift one category from here to there okay? because if a person is uh, unmarried not necessary that the person is unhappy okay? so you cannot say that unhappy uh, no unmarried uh, happy life is equal to you know, like uh, married unhappy life you cannot you cannot just keep jumping like this you, know, you have to be very specific when you say otherwise people will lose faith on astrology and your clients won't like you anymore okay and they, uh, it's not about clients or family or your predictions, but overall the ethnicity, the authenticity and the validity of the signs goes away okay, when we do these blunders, right? So therefore, whatever you are checking in the Dashamsha also, you should cross check it with the money houses of the Lagna chart, the D1 chart. Only then you should say, okay, because suppose, again, let's take Mars example. If somebody has Mars, yeah, well placed in the Shamsha. The person can be an army officer, the person can be a politician, or the person can be a good cook, cook or an astrologer also. Okay. 
the visual will be so for that you have to check the Lagrange chart what's going on <laughs> all right you cannot just blindly say oh mars is exalted i have seen such stupid things people say you know mars is exalted in d10 you should go into army oh what if that person is uh, wanting to be a cook another person is like oh army i'm not interested but that same Mars can give you talents in cooking because Mars represents cooking, for God's sake. So that, that thing is actually there, but you are making a blunder in, in interpreting the presence of Mars either as an army officer, as a politician, as a, or as a cook or as an astrologer. And one of these traits will be there in that person, 100%. But you have to figure that out from the Lagna chart that which things are coming to me as a physical manifestation that is your job that you have to figure out as an astrologer you have to do the entire analysis in depth and detail and only after that you should give a consultation otherwise you should not just superficially keep saying oh venus is exalted good marriage or you know jupiter is exalted you will be a good life coach i mean it's all nonsense jupiter exalted in navamsha can uh, you know give you great children sometimes i've seen that yes you may be surprised. Now, Amsa is not that sort of children, but it, it can give you sometimes. If that is how it is manifesting. All right. So, divisional charts are like they're giving you something. So, and then it's up to the Lagna chart what they accept. Imagine it's like a person comes and gives you, you know, uh, some uh, some Indian sweets, you know, some rasgullas, gulab jamuns, rasmalais. But suppose uh, you don't like uh, gulab jamun or rasgullas. You only like rasmalai. So you may say, okay, I will take the rasmalai. <laughs> All right? Because you cannot eat everything. You cannot get any everything. Let's take Venus, for example. You, you, you cannot claim I will have, uh, you know, a great married life because of a great Venus. I will also have, you know, million dollars in this, you know, creative industry or I'll be ultra creative myself you know generally it doesn't happen like this you won't see so because we have limitations we are not Narayan <laughs> only Lord Narayan he is Sarva Guna Sampan he can he's the only one who can have everything okay so therefore we have limitations in this world so you have to check which energy of that planet is flowing to the Lagna chart and only then you should make a prediction all right Otherwise, you will make serious blunders. Okay. Thank you very much. And if you want to watch other videos on divisional charts, I'll put it here. And uh, if you're new, then please subscribe to it. And if you want a consultation from me, you can go to my website down in the description section. All right. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you'll find him.